I just need the day to rest. So, if you could take the babies tonight. What's wrong? Nothing. I just, um, started my medication. For postpartum depression, you'll recall. It's giving me a pretty bad migraine. But can you keep the babies? Yeah, of course. Oh, make sure I'm not disturbed. Uh-oh, this isn't looking good. Jane the Virgin, all new this Monday at 9, 8 central on The CW. Hey, thanks guys. Thank you so much for being here. And before we even talk about the incredible trajectory that Petra has been on for two seasons, congratulations on season three renewal. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I've had I my mean, fingers crossed for a couple months. Well, I mean, we all kind of thought that it was a no-brainer, but, but we whenever, you never know. When you came to first play her, I mean, for, when she was initially introduced, she was the villainess of the show, and she's really kind of emerged as a very complex, somewhat tragic figure. I mean, you learn about her life and the, the, her past relationships, which weren't so great. So kind of catch us up with Petra as she stands now. Well, Petra, Mother of yeah. twins. Mother of twins. Um, owner of twin, not owner, how do you refer to that? Um, she has a twin as well. Um, <laughs> there's twins just all over her life. So I think the wonderful thing about our show is really Jenny Ehrman and our incredible staff of writers um, really write for their actors, which is such a rare and wonderful thing. So I think, yes, even though she was supposed to be the villain in the beginning, I think they, they discovered that they can make her funny and kind of went with that. And thanks to that, we have you know, the super interesting character that is Petra today. Now, you guys watch the show, right? Come on. Yeah. I love this room. Thanks for being here, guys. So when I say chapter 36, you know of what I speak. Yes? No? Let me, sorry, little paper, paper shuffle here. Let me refresh your memories. Uh, the greatest stand-up childbirth scene of twins <laughs> thank I you. think ever witnessed in primetime television. Oh, thank you. Do you, how do you look back on that? Uh, happily, uh, that was a very stressful day. That was physically exhausting. I, I mean, I, if giving fake birth to fake twins was that difficult, I can't even begin to imagine what actual labor is like. Um, it was, I nearly passed out a couple times. Some kind soul from the, from the crew just ran along with orange juice every few minutes. You just, almost passed out? Oh yeah, from the breathing and the heaving and, and the yelling and it's Petra and you know, Petra giving Petra's birth is not a chat. quiet kind of situation. Um, so yeah, it was, it was an incredible experience. And that, I think, episode really is what changed her relationship with Jane. Yes. Because she thanked her. I mean, that whole dynamic between Petra and Jane is just fascinating to me because it's, it's not like many times we see like, oh, we like each other, we're friends, great, that's it. You know, it's kind of, it keeps coming and going and it keeps changing and, and they like each other but then they both have these guards and they can't let each other get too close. Um, because they're so guarded, both of them in their own ways, but then secretly I think Petra really admires Jane and really looks up to her, even though she won't admit it to herself, but it's a lot of fun. Is she gonna go to the wedding? Is she what? Is she gonna go to the wedding? Uh, well, I can't tell you. Because That's still tonight, this is live. Okay. Right. <laughs> I can't give it away. You can't blame me for asking. I know, no, I, I admire you the for last, it, but uh, last you can't blame me for not answering. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Fully respect. No, I'm, I mean, I, it's fine. I just don't want to get fired. <laughs> we just no, got we season be, three. We would be so sad if you weren't on season three. No, that would be terrible. I'm two characters now. They'd have to kill me twice. How do you play? <laughs> <laughs> so your evil twin was introduced. Yes. And it made me think of, obviously, Friends and Phoebe and Ursula Buffay. Which, ah, so, you know, oh, my God. Thank amazing you. Amazing primetime twins. Oh, the other yes. set of twins that we love, played mm -hmm. by Lisa Goudreau. So how do you, how do you play your... My twin. Your twin. Anieshka. Who has, who has very um, unfortunate hair. Who has unfortunate hair. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, luckily that's a wig, so I'm not actually insulted. <laughs> um, but thanks. Um, <laughs> no, it's, uh, well, I was really working on making her as different from Petra as I possibly could, because selfishly as an actor, I mean, being able to play two completely different roles on the same show is such an incredible gift. And um, she's based... <laughs> Okay, so she's based on a few of my cats. <laughs> she's got this personal space issues and she jumps backwards and yelps and scratches. I don't know if you guys saw that yet, but so, so I have a, I call it getting the fear. So I feel like she gets the fear. She's kind of like, oh, when anything moves. 
Um, so yeah, it's amazing. And I, I really love playing both her and Petra in the same scene when other people are there as well, when there's more characters, because I get to show them reacting to things completely differently, which is... A Technically, how do you do that? Because you're acting against yourself. Well, I have an incredible uh, double called Barbie, who is a genius, seriously, and she just remembers everything I do and all my body language. And there's someone reading the opposite lines. But what I did realize, and I didn't think about it, because I didn't know how this works, uh, so you have to come so um, prepared for the scene. You have to decide in advance how each character reacts and how they, you know, because if I'm playing one character now and you're the double, for example, then I have to be reacting through things that haven't happened yet. Got it. So it's complicated, but it's, it's a ton of fun. What was your reaction when you found out that you had a twin and she was coming on the show? Well, I found out when I got the script. I thought Petra was running away, just like the audience would have. You had, you had no idea? No, I didn't know. Oh, wow. I was like, why is she dyeing her hair? Now I gotta, uh, like, what? Is she running away? Are they writing me off the show without talking to me? And then suddenly the twin showed up, and then that was, that's how I found out. Of all, <laughs> it was just like everybody else. It was great. Of all the twists and turns that Petra has had on the show, which one shocked you the most? Um... The, the twin would be a big one, because it's a whole the new character. Um, but the, uh, huh, that's a good question. Everything, in Jane of Virgin, you can't pick one thing. There's just, I mean, every single episode has so many cliffhangers that you're just, you know, left kind of mouth open and in shock. And it's such, the show is so fascinating because it's, it, it just takes like real life and, and makes it so, Enhances Quirky. it a it bit. Enhances it, yeah. <laughs> right? I know. And it's just, and everyone is so relatable on it. And I mean, you guys know that she named her twins Anna and Elsa, without and had, knowing it had anything yeah. to do with Frozen. And actually, and actually mocked Jean, uh, Jane when Jane was like, uh, "Maybe that's a uh, bad idea." She was like, "Oh, it's so funny." And Petra's like, "What?" <laughs> You're the only one that'll think of that. But you know that I didn't know it was from Frozen either. Like it totally fooled me as well. I was like, "Great names." And they're like, "You know what the joke is here, right?" <laughs> I was like, "No." <laughs> Great. Yeah, I know. I'm the last one on earth. Um, so, so yeah, uh, uh, what I really love about our show is that um, it's really down-to-earth characters, basically, but they're thrown into these telenovela, larger-than-life, crazy situations. So it's kind of like watching you and I have to deal with, you know, an accidental being kidnapping hostage. Yeah, or being held something. hostage by your and crazy fan. so that's where the comedy lies i mean it's it's really putting people in a position of like how do these telenovela situations even happen and how do we deal with them so that's and petra specifically takes everything so seriously she doesn't think anything's funny and uh, so i think that's what's funny <laughs> when you signed on to do the show what about petra resonated with you well, in the beginning, I was worried about playing a villain, but then the minute I got on the phone, I mean, I loved the script, especially the, the Latin narrator. I thought it was just completely genius. And then um, I got on the phone with Jenny, our creator, and, and she had explained to me a bit of what's in store for Petra, and, you know, that she's never going to be one thing. She's constantly, you're going to hate her, you're going to love her, she's going to be vulnerable, but she's also the villain, and I just thought it was so incredibly interesting. And, and I think she went from being three-dimensional to being seven-dimensional over the past two seasons. And it's so funny, too, because, I mean, I remember when we first, you know, when we read about the show being picked up, we were like, Jane the Virgin, come on. Like, <laughs> come on. That's a cute title, but really. And when I read the premise, I was like... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, really? And it's evolved so much into this, like, workplace, family, comedy, series. Where do you want to see Petra go in season three? Have another set of twins? <laughs> Just keep having babies. No, um... So the funny thing is I always want, I'm torn, because as, well, I consider Petra kind of a friend, like a bizarre friend, but a friend at this point. She's someone I've kind of lived with for two years. I want her to be, you know, live happily ever after and have this happy life and find somebody who loves her and, you know, have some friends. But at the same time as an actor who's playing Petra, no, you want her to keep being interesting. So it's two different parts of me. I don't know. Do you think you could be friends with Petra? I could be, really? sure. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I'd want to kill her every once in a while, but not agree with her decisions. But I think she needs someone who kind of puts her in place. And I think Jane actually does that. I think that's part of why she, she wants Jane in her life. Now, what is it like working with Gina? Ugh. As you can imagine. I mean, incredible. Yeah, I know, I know. Fantastic. We have a, an, an amazing time, especially with all those birthing scenes. It was such a wonderful day. We're just playing off each other, and it's just play. It's so much fun. It's, a wonderful experience. What's been the toughest scene for you to shoot? Was it the birthing scene? Physically, the birthing scene. 
Um, yeah, physically the birth is the birthing scene. Actually, it's funny because in one of the recent episodes, in a Mother's Day episode, I don't know if, if you've all seen it yet, um, it was a scene that really broke my heart uh, when everybody was celebrating Jane being a mother. And, and suddenly, while I was filming that scene, I really started feeling for Petra because nobody was even remembering that it's her Mother's Day too. And she went through postpartum depression and she's in such a struggle and her mother's not there and she doesn't have any friends. And, <laughs> And, uh, and Aneshka stood up and, you know, spoke for her. And I don't know. I was just running Petra's life through my head at that point. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> she is a very, yeah, she's... I feel bad for yeah. her. Most of the time she's I just want her to have a friend. Almost, Since I two think. seasons I'm telling everyone, like, I wish Petra had a friend. I wish Petra had a friend. And now she has a friend. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, again. <laughs> Even her twin sister is weird. I mean, come on. She's a bit strange. Yeah. I like her fashion stuff. I keep warning everybody, that's going to really get into fashion now. She's going to be a fashion a trendsetter with a norm core, like mom jeans. The one thing I requested was high tops. I was like, okay, I'm down with this character. This is great, but she needs to have high tops. It's her only pair of shoes, so it worked. So do you have to run lines against yourself? Yes. So every night you're at home just prepping with Just yourself. multiple personality stuff, yes. I think my neighbors think I'm completely insane. I honestly Neighbors can't. out there, I'm not nuts. I'm just playing two characters. <laughs> because that must be so incredibly difficult. Like I know you're 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 making it sound so easy, but I can't even imagine. It took some switching on and off like that. Well, it took some um, some adjusting, some figuring out. You know, for all of us, how how to even do this. Um, but I think now we have such a, a good rhythm going. It's going pretty fast. It's good. And so, of all your cats, which is the one closest to to your sister? Oh, my cats? Mm -hmm. Pablo. Personality-wise, Pablo? Pablo, my cat. He has a mustache. He's in Israel. Yeah, he's a good one. He gets a fear. If anybody moves a chair in the house, he's like, what? The? Excuse me. <laughs> What's going on? Yes. How did you, I, I know that you, you grew up in Israel. You started out as a dancer. Yeah. How did you come to be an actress? Well, honestly, I'd love to have the kind of story where you go, I always knew I, I wanted to do this, but I didn't at all. Um, I knew I wanted to be some sort of an artist. I wasn't... I was tap dancing for a while, but that wasn't exactly my thing. And then I was trying to be a painter, but I'm just not very good at that. And um, and I tried, I got a few model modeling offers, and uh, I wasn't sure, but I went for it in the end. And then one day I had this uh, runway show, and um, and they prepped us in advance for like a month, how to walk out, how to walk on heels, how to do all this, and, and you're supposed to walk out, look very serious, turn around, go back. And uh, I was so excited about the dress that they gave me. Did I just walk to the end of the runway and took this giant bow and smiled and turned around and got yelled at backstage? But my dad, who used to be a director, was in the audience and he said, "You know, you might not be a great model, but you might you should consider acting." I was like, "No, what? No, I didn't even think about it." And he said, "Just go take a class for me." And I did. And within the first ten minutes, I was in love. Oh yes, that's what I was supposed to do. So how did, you, how did you go from there to Jane the Virgin? Wow. Well, I was working back home for about eight years before coming Been out a lot here. of Israeli movies. Yes, I did some Israeli movies. did two Israeli horror movies. Um, I did the first Israeli horror movie, which was really cool. And um, I did a lot of TV back home, a lot of stuff, and, and studied theater and everything. And eventually, I just kind of came to Hollywood. Honestly, I didn't think anything would come of it. It seems so far away and so huge, and it seems like everybody's just trying to succeed here, that it's you know, completely impossible. And, uh, and I just came out for a week, and during that week, I somehow found my incredible manager and went back home and started self-taping and came out for something called pilot season, which I didn't know what that even was, and uh, booked a pilot, which didn't go forward, but, um, but it was kind of my way in. And uh, then I did another CW show called Rain, which I loved, and I did that in Toronto for about eight months. And, uh, and then two years ago, I was back in LA for pilot season, and Jane the Virgin happened. And there you go. And it was the best thing ever. <laughs> now, I mean, the show is doing so well. Critics love it. Obviously, you know, Gina has become also a huge star. How has your life changed? Well, um, publicly, it's changed. Publicly, yes. yes. Uh, well, people recognize me. That's, that's a change. And I still, I'm not used to it. When people still come up to me in the street and be like, oh my god, Yael, I'm like, trying to remember where I know them from. <laughs> I'm like, oh, right. Mm. Um, so yeah, so that, uh, you know, I have a job. I'm working every day, which is just completely unreal. Every day when I'm driving to set, I still have to pinch myself and remember where I am and how lucky I am, because it's completely insane to even be here. And um, personally, well, I moved to LA from Tel Aviv. 
And so that's a big difference, new friends, new people. Um, the cast is like a second family to me. They're just the most incredible bunch of people and I could not have done this move without them. And, uh, and yeah, but I, I mean, honestly, I, I would love to say I'm living the wild Hollywood lifestyle. I'm not, I crochet, <laughs> I cook. <laughs> just, yeah, <laughs> no crazy lifestyle. No, I was, just, I was just curious because with a show this hot, I was like, I wonder if there's been a huge sea change just in the way, you know, that you have to behave in public or anything like that. There probably should be, but there hasn't been. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm just still me. Now, what is a typical week like for you when you guys are shooting? A typical week? Mm -hmm. um, well, now that I'm playing two characters, I definitely work double. Um, I hope they pay you double. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, at usually Monday morning, start at like 4, 4 30 a.m. Uh, so it's a long week. We work long hours. We can work 16 hours. Yeah. Working almost every day, coming home, cooking dinner, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Doing your thing. Doing my thing. What of um, Petra's qualities, which of her qualities resonates the most with you? We look similar. Um, I love that she's assertive. That's something that actually, over the past two years playing Petra, I've learned more about myself and, you know, started to kind of work on that in my own life. So that's really cool. That's actually awesome that that rubbed off because yeah, right? that's something thing. about her. Like, she's assertive and she's unapologetic yeah. for who she is, which yes. I really think you don't see a lot of. And especially this past season with her being able to tell Raphael, like, I'm not a second choice. I, am, I deserve better. I, I was so proud of her for that, you know? She's come such a long way. She's had these series of really unfortunate relationships and this terrible relationship with her mother. And, um, and yeah, she's finally believing in herself. And now this, the finale is coming up. What can you say? Anything? Well, the interesting thing is I got asked recently what the cliffhanger is going to be like. And my only answer is, do you really think Jane the Virgin would have only one cliffhanger? <laughs> it's gonna have like ten. Every episode has a, a <laughs> yes, exactly. So many. I mean, we all I can say without giving anything away is we had the table read, mm -hmm. and we all left. The entire cast was just like it's completely speechless, and then just kind of grabbing each other in a hall, going, "Did you did you see that coming?" And everyone's like, "No." <laughs> I mean, our writers are so brilliant because I consider myself a pretty creative and imaginative person, but they write things that I could never see coming. I could never, even in my wildest dreams, imagine that. And they make it so realistic and so grounded and, and such a good build up to it that it makes sense. I mean, they're seriously outstanding. And so each character will have something oh, yeah. juicy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do not worry. With. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> How much do you guys weigh in on the plot points? Weigh in? We don't find out about it until about the day before we start filming. Mm. It's like scandal. Like in, in, in oh, is it like read. that? Yeah, you don't actually know. We don't know. But that's the great thing. We get to find out all together at the table reads. And then our table reads are really loud. But we're a pretty loud cast. I think we were the, pretty lo we were the loudest table at the Golden Globes. <laughs> I'm sure we're getting the stink eye for some other cast. Wait, wait, wait. Now we have to discuss this. Uh, go ahead. We <laughs> partied the hardest at the Globes. We partied the hardest. No, oh, we at, at your table. At your table. Oh, who did? Yeah. Oh, no, it was all of us. It was United. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, we nearly flipped the table. When Gina won, all of us stood up. We're like, rah! <laughs> Are you kidding? That, that was, was actually crazy. one of those super, super cool moments when she won. Oh. I mean, come on. Oh, no, it was, I mean, beyond anything. We could. It, just being there was ins I could. It was, where am I? Like, what's happening? And then the, my friend won a Golden Globe. It was beyond anything I could have even imagined. Yes, and very well deserved. Beyond, beyond well deserved, because yes. that is a difficult absolutely. role to play. Oh, absolutely. And do it without like schmaltz and and and. No, no, completely you know, honest, like, completely yeah. real. Now, before we turn over to the audience, I know that you crochet. Yeah, well, I I, read, well, you said that, and I've read yes. that. <laughs> What's been the most impressive thing you've ever made? Hmm. Feel free to brag. Slippers. Yes, I made slippers pretty early on too. But now I've been working for like months on this blanket. It's never end. I think it's gonna be the longest blanket in the world. What, is it like a kaftan or? I don't know what that is, but maybe. It's, a, it's, it's got stripes. It's like a, mm -hmm. a throw blanket. Is it like your zen occupation in between shooting? Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take it to set or I'll, I'll be listening to an audio book and just doing that. That's fantastic. Slippers are pretty impressive, though, especially if you, if you didn't. I should have worn them. You should have worn them. I mean, that would be a little, whatever, I should have. <laughs> 
they're, they're my greatest work. I mean, they do come apart slightly. If I, I could have worn them, like, pull the string and just, like, be barefoot. <laughs> How did you start? Crocheting? On the show. Like everything I've been doing recently. They give Petra this really cool stuff to do, like crocheting, playing yeah, violin. I know she crochets. I thought she crocheted because you did, not no, no, vice versa. She crocheted season one. She was crocheting a little beanie for the first time she was pregnant. There was a flash pack, and they just gave me like a hook and some yarn, and they were like, go for it, and they taught me how to do the basic stitch, and I could not put it down. And like the, the poor sound guy came to wire me, and I was like, nope, you're going to have to work around this. And I was obviously didn't know what I was doing, so I was like a big ball of yarn. I was like, could not put it down the entire day. And then the next day, I was like, well, first of all, I annoyed our props guys because I just like stole that home. They're like, no, we, we need that. <laughs> so I went and I bought myself some yarn. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. Same with playing the violin. I've been taking lessons ever since when they let me play the violin. And I just assumed that they wrote your life into Petra's. But I kind of you know like I mean? it better this way because it gives me all these new skills. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be speaking Czech in like no time. But, well, you were actually in the childbirth scene. Well, yes. I, Those well, were some very choice lines. But, thank you. <laughs> what was it like, throw yourself in the field and die? And I'm totally paraphrasing. What was it? Was it like, go into the forest and soil yourself? Yeah. I don't remember. You have a mouth, the mouth of a... I don't remember what it was. Yeah, it was something creative. It was amazing. Uh, yes, no, yeah. no, it was hysterical. All right, Jane fans, hit it with some questions. Hey, guys. Hi, Ayo. Hi. Thank you for being here. Um, if Petra and her twin had their own spinoff series, <laughs> what would the title be and the premise? I would be petrified. <laughs> Did you just think of that? No. <laughs> but I should have said genius. yes, because that would have been really cool. No, I've been telling Jenny that since season one. I'm like, Petra's spinoff is petrified. Um, uh, Tyler would be petrified. And this, the premise would be them raising twins in an apartment and trying to get along and trying to get Aneshka to like fit into the world. Yes. It would be a comedy, <laughs> not a drama. That wouldn't work at all. Yes, thank you for the question. Hi, thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, if you what, what's your favorite all-time sitcom, and uh, do, uh, which actress, uh, which, which one of your favorite actors would you like to work with with that favorite sitcom? Ooh, my favorite sitcom probably would be Friends. Yeah, actors, all of them. I wish I, Friends still existed and I, I could just show up. As Petra. <laughs> you imagine a bar brawl between Phoebe and Ursula and Petra <gasps> and, and Agnieszka? Uh, that would be oh. the best episode of At the, Petrified. Um, the, what was the coffee shop called? Peach Pit. No, 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 no. That's 90210. Oh. Um, um, Central Perk. Oh, God, right. <laughs> and 90210. Did they have any twins? No. Yes. You know why I was yes, thinking about yes, 90210? Yes, because yes. I was thinking about Anishka's yes. wardrobe. Uh, um, Jason Priestley and... Um, he had a twin? Oh, right. Remember, they were fraternal twins. They were twins. Jan Doherty and Jason right. Priestley were fraternal twins. Oh, I used to love that show. I should watch that. I don't know. I, 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 think, I think you and I need to start a twin blog. <laughs> Wait, maybe. Like, just chronicle. I don't know if that's my story to tell, since I only <laughs> play a twin, but I could try. <laughs> yes, thank you. Great question. The definitive guide to pop culture twins. Yes. Next question, please. Hi. Hi. Um, was it hard to, um, like, when you were p playing Petra, was it hard for, like, the twin and Petra to hug, like, when you tried to do it? That was a very interesting moment because that was really the first scene that we filmed with a twin. So that's when we were really, like I said, figuring it all out. And, um, and so that's when I realized, like, oh, no, I have to... I, by myself, have to figure out how each one of them hugs. And I couldn't, like, practice by hugging myself. So I just practice with the doubles, so that was kind of weird. I was like, stand still for a second. I'm going to hug you. I'm not weird. <laughs> I'm just going to try this out. So yeah, it was a funny scene to, to film. But I think we got it. It worked, right? Yeah, it totally worked. Cool. And Thank you. Hi, it's an honor to have you here. At first, I didn't like Petra when I was like, <laughs> but then I started to see like who she really was and her own problems she had going on. I'm a binge watcher when it comes to the show. Because <laughs> the cliffhangers had me going to like 4 in the morning for season oh, 1. Wow. It was one of those moments. Um, who was a stylist on set? Because every outfit you had on was amazing. I mean, you have a beautiful look anyways. Oh, thank but you. But the stylist on set, I don't know if you had say in it. We have our designer, Rachel. She is incredible. Incredible. And you know what's great about her is 
it's not always like that where they let you really be involved with building your character, but a wardrobe can be so important for building a character, and she really lets me be involved in creating that. I mean, I think all of us, we're very involved in creating our looks. I can be shopping on guilt and just like taking pictures of stuff for Petra and sending it to her, and you know, she'll let me try stuff on, and, and she's absolutely brilliant. And the way she also, the whole, like, everything she does with the colors, with the whole, like, Villanueva thing is more orange and warm, and the whole Petra thing is colder. It's, I think it tells such a story. And thank you for noticing that. And so when you're shopping for yourself, you actually think to yourself, oh my God, this is a perfect Petra look. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll be on guilt anyway. Mm -hmm. But like, I'll find stuff that's for me or I'll find stuff that's, mm -hmm. you know, right. But especially when Petra was pregnant, well, we were trying to figure out what pre pregnant Petra would look like because it's a whole different kind of, you know, she can't wear pencil skirts. She was still wearing heels, which is impressive. Um, I won't when I'm pregnant, but she was. And, uh, and yeah, so. And when can we watch the finale? Uh, tonight at 9 p.m. on the CW. On the CW. Thank you so much. Thank you.